Hi and welcome to Unit 15 of World History 2, titled The Age of Imperialism. So we will be exploring uh, many pivotal topics that have shaped the course of our history. So we're going to delve into the characteristics of imperial rule, the motivations behind European colonial leaders, the causes and effects of rebellions such as the Sepoy Rebellion, and the efforts of reformers to strengthen China. So let me move on to the next slide. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So we will begin by taking a look at how uh, imperial rule, um, which was characterized by the dominance of one state or power over others, uh, and we're going to look at its characteristics. So, one of its main characteristics is a centralized authority. Imperial rulers often centralize power and authority under a single uh, governing body, enabling efficient governance and administration over vast territories. Second would be economic exploitation. So, imperial powers frequently exploited the resources and labor of subject territories to enrich themselves, leading to economic disparities and dependence. Third is cultural assimilation. So imperial rulers often impose their culture, language, and values on subject populations, leading to cultural um, assimilation and the erosion of indigenous traditions. Fourth is, of course, military supremacy. So imperial powers maintained large standing armies uh, to assert control over conquered territories and suppress resistance or rebellion. So these define the nature of imperial rule and its impact on subject populations throughout history. Now, European colonial leaders, driven by various motivations, played a central role in shaping the era of imperialism. So one of these motivations is economic gain Colonial leaders sought to exploit the resources and markets of distant lands to enrich themselves and their nations through trade, investment, and colonization. Second, there were strategic interests, so control over strategic locations such as ports, trade routes, and military bases allowed colonial powers to expand their influence and secure geopolitical advantages. Third is ideological superiority. Colonial leaders often justified imperialism on ideological grounds, setting beliefs in racial superiority, cultural hegemony, and the spread of civilization and religion. Fourth was national prestige. So imperialism served as a means for colonial powers to assert their dominance and prestige on the world stage, enhancing their status as global superpowers. So understanding these motivations provides insight into the co complex dynamics driving European imperialism and its consequences for colonized regions. Now we're going to talk about something called the Sepoy Rebellion, which arose in response to various grievances and injustices perpetrated by imperial powers. So we're going to discuss its causes and its effects. So the rebellions often stemmed from set factors such as economic exploitation, cultural oppression, religious intolerance, and political disenfranchis disenfranchisement, fueling resentment and resistance among subject populations. Now, these rebellions had, of course, far-reaching consequences, including loss of life, destruction of property, political upheaval, and shift in power dynamics between colonial rulers and indigenous populations. Additionally, rebellions served as catalysts for social and political change, inspiring nationalist movements and calls for independence. So finally, we're gonna look at efforts to strengthen China in this unit. So in the face of internal and external challenges, reformers in China sought to strengthen the country and modernize its institution, institutions, excuse me, so one was the self-strengthening movement where reformers advocated for reforms aimed at modernizing China's military, economy, and infrastructure, 
drawing inspiration from Western technology and institution institutions. There was the 100 Days Reform uh, initiated in 1898. So the 100 Days Reform aimed to modernize China's political and social systems through me measures such as constitutionalism, education reform, and administrative restructuring. Now, one major event was the Boxer Rebellion. This was a violent anti-foreign, anti-Christian uprising in 1900, which highlighted growing tensions between reformers and conservative forces in China, ultimately leading to increased foreign intervention and concessions. So despite these efforts, China's attempts, attempts to strengthen itself, itself faced numerous challenges, including resistance from conservative factions, foreign intervention, and internal divisions. So this will wrap up our unit. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, listening so far, and I look forward to looking you to working with you over the next few months over this unit and working with you in class. Thank you.